Here in Studio 1.6, I've got the new Pro EQ3 stock plugin applied to this acoustic guitar part. Now, this guitar part has some specific problems which dynamic EQs are really good at solving. Let me explain. You can actually see above the performance, I've got a couple of markers. One here says light playing, and later on, I've indicated heavy playing. Let's just have a listen to the difference between the two, starting off with the light playing. And you know what, with no EQ applied, no compression, no nothing at all, I reckon that's a decent start for this acoustic guitar sound. Now let's have a listen to the heavy section. Now, apart from it getting louder, one of the other things that's happening is in the lower end of this performance, it's getting pretty boomy. Have a listen again. In fact, let's just use a new feature in this uh, Pro EQ from version 2 to 3. I'll just grab one of the nodes here, and I'm just going to use the solo feature here. We can just solo one frequency band like so, and let's have a listen again. We can sweep it around, yep. And that's where all that boobiness is there, right? okay? So we want to reduce that. It doesn't sound all that great. So we're going to grab that node and just roughly just reduce it like so. Have a listen. And that's much, much better. Now let's have a listen to the light section again. Uh-oh. Suddenly that sounds really thick. Thin, okay now this is the problem with performances like this they're very dynamic and you have different EQ needs in one section of the song compared to the other and that's what we're going to solve using the new dynamic EQ features of Pro EQ 3. Hi folks I'm Mike and I hope you will. Now, before we move on to that solution, I just want to encourage you to stick around to the end of this video where we're going to be discussing sidechain dynamic EQ. Now, that may sound super complex, but it's really quite elegant and simple in Studio 1.6. Very useful to know as well. Now, let's get to that solution for the acoustic guitar. So now that we've identified the frequencies which are causing an issue, I actually want to restore this kind of back to its default value, roughly, that is, because in this section where I've got the light playing, I really don't want any EQ to be applied at all. Now, of course, I do want it applied in the heavy section. So let's go to the heavy section and let's switch on the dynamic EQ features. We do that in the new plugin by clicking on any of the D buttons within the bands that we can see here. Any of them will be fine. When we click it, then the dynamic controls appear for all of the bands. Now, each band has two new controls, which we can see. One is threshold and the other one is range. I'm going to start off by adjusting the range. If I move it down below zero, we can see in the display above, we've got an indication of how the curve is going to change for the EQ. And we'll set it as we did before, roughly down to there. Now, it won't be doing anything at the moment, okay, because we haven't set the threshold. The threshold at the moment is set to zero. And if we play the song... That dynamic EQ isn't kicking in. So what I'm going to do is play this section. I'm gradually going to pull this, thre this threshold down till we start to get some activity there. And you can see that white line sort of bobbing up and down there as it implements that EQ curve. Have a look again. So we're getting rid of that boominess there by applying an EQ curve when it's needed. Now, if we go back to the light section here, what I would be doing here is just fine tuning that threshold, just making sure that this EQ curve is not kicking in in the light section. In fact, it's pretty much where I need it. You can see a little bit of movement there, but nothing that you would be aware of in terms of what you can hear. So we've really solved our problem because in the light section, we still have the warmth that we get from those low frequencies. But in the heavier section, we're controlling some of that boominess.
Now, this dynamic EQ was applied according to what was happening in the performance of this piece. But sometimes you want to apply dynamic EQ depending on what's happening in the performance of another instrument within the song. Let's take a look at how to do that now. Oh, just really quickly before we do get into that, this is a brand new channel. So every single subscriber and every like is so much appreciated. I thank you in advance for that. Also, your comments are really important as well. Let me know in the comments down below how you feel about these new dynamic EQ features with Studio One Six. So in this case, we have an acoustic guitar and a little bit later, we have a vocal which comes in. So sometimes the acoustic guitar is by itself, sometimes it's with the vocal. Let's just have a quick listen to a small section. Was it the touch of my hand? Was it the way that I stand? Now, sometimes we have the problem that two different parts or instruments share a lot of the same frequencies. And this is happening a little bit here with the vocal and the guitar. They're sharing a lot of the same sort of mid to high frequencies. And that means that the guitar is still kind of overpowering the vocal a little bit. And there's not that sort of separation which I would like to hear. Now, if we go to the part where they're both performing at the same time, and I do the kind of EQ adjustment I would like to get the sort of guitar out of the way, way of the vocal, which I happen to know is around about here, or roughly I would say around about 2K there. Yeah, maybe a bit of a wider Q then we can get the guitar out of the way of the vocals. Let's have a quick listen. Was it the touch of my hand? But in the sections where there is no vocals or there are no vocals, have a listen to that acoustic guitar. Ooh, it sounds kind of mushy. It's kind of lacking definition. So a similar issue to what we had before in the first example. But in this case, we've got the vocals which are, are needing to change uh, what happens with the EQ on the guitar. Very easy to do, in fact, in Studio One Six. Let's just return this back to normal. We're going to use something called a sidechain. Now, if this sounds scary and complicated to you, don't worry, you're going to see in a moment, it's actually very, very simple. At the top where we can see the word sidechain, we can just switch on for the moment. We need to select a source. Now, what we're doing here is we're selecting a signal from another part of the mix, and we're using it to feed into our plugin. So in this case, we're just going to click on this arrow here, and then we can see the available source. There's only two in this song. We can see the main vocal there, and I'm just going to click on send. Okay, when I do that, which I've done now, if we look over at that vocal channel here, we can see that that send has appeared there. So we can control the level of send, etc. there. We'll take a look at that in a moment. So back in the EQ plugin, we now have that vocal feeding in. So now let's just play both of them together. We've got the side chain switched on and have a look at what happens to the display now. Was it the touch of my hand? Was it the way that So we can see two lines there, the blue one is the guitar and the pink one is the vocal. Have a look again. Was it the touch of my hand? Was it the way that I stand? And we could see there that they do share a lot of the same frequencies, especially in these sort of mid to upper mid frequencies and these higher frequencies here. So we're going to have that uh, this decrease in these frequencies in the guitar when the vocal is performing. Very easy to do. We've got our band selected here. I'm just going to click on that D button again for the dynamic controls to appear. And I'm going to start off by adjusting the range. Okay, just as we did before. Yeah, and I'm going to do a fairly sort of substantial um, reduction there. I'm going to adjust that cue there. It's fairly obvious this one. It's not very subtle. And I'm going to do the same as I did before. I'm going to play the vocal and the guitar together and I'm gradually going to adjust this threshold until I get the kind of movement with this EQ band that I want. Was it the touch of my hand? Was it the way that I stand too close? And you can see that happening there. So that EQ is only being implemented when the vocal is actually, you know, got a signal to it, okay, and it's going above the threshold. Have a look again so you can see what's happening. Was it the touch of my hand? But as soon as that vocal stops, everything returns back to normal. So we're still getting all of those nice 
crispy frequencies which give the guitar its presence there while the vocal is not performing just for fun let's have a listen to what's really happening with that acoustic guitar with our vocal muted now in order to do that i'll just go over to that send here i'm going to change the type of send to a pre-fade ascend just by clicking on this tiny little icon we can see here what does that mean that means that we're going to be sending that signal through to the eq regardless of the value of the fader here so i'm just going to turn the fader for the vocal all the way down i'm actually going to mute the reverb for the vocal okay let's go back a bit have a listen to the guitar um, from the section where there is no vocal and now we're going to hear the effect of the vocal without actually hearing the vocal itself so you can really hear that guitar being suppressed there in those frequencies you are not really aware of that when it's in the mix which is where the beauty of it lies so we can push that fader back up have that vocal back in there have another listen was it the touch of my hand was it the way that i stand and we're now getting a lot more separation there between the vocal and the guitar now it's just occurred to me that some of you may be trying all of this without fully understanding how to use the stock EQ plugin which comes with Studio One. I've made a video about that already and you really should educate yourself on that. Follow the thumbnail right here. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.